BTC Pay server can be hosted in many different ways. The focus of this video will be to show you how to self-host BTC Pay server on a virtual private server in a cloud. Bear in mind that this method might not be the best for everybody. That's why I recommend that you take a look at our documentation where we will help you learn about different deployment methods and pros and cons of each. We also have a decision tree which can give you some pretty good information on which deployment method is for you. In general, VPS is uh, good for medium-sized businesses and people who do not care that much about self-sovereignty and censorship resistance, but they care about reliability of their servers and their server uh, being up online 24-7. If you are a more hardcore user and care about your privacy and censorship resistance, we recommend that you host PTC Pay server on your own hardware. On the other hand, if you're a newbie, beginner, you do not know anything about self-hosting, you just want to give BTC Pay Server a try, you can try third-party BTC Pay Server hosts. This tutorial will be generic and will be valid for any virtual private server provider which meets minimum requirements. And those are at least 2 gigabytes of RAM, at least 10 gigabytes of storage, let's say, do optimal would be 80 gigabytes what i will be using in this tutorial so 2 gigabytes of ram 80 gigs of ssd storage you can use hdd but ssd is highly highly recommended because it provides way better performance so if you can go with ssd and very important your vps needs to have docker support and since we'll be hosting our server for our customers for people to pay us on the web and we want it accessible on the web we will need a domain name. Since this is a generic tutorial, I won't recommend any particular VPS provider. You can do your own research and decide a provider that fits your budget or your and your needs. Once you sign up with a provider, you either will receive your login details through email or you'll have to log in into your dashboard and check your server data there. Usually once you log in with a VPS provider you will have your server listed and you'll have something like manage server and you can see your data there. The first thing we'll do before deployment is configure our DNS. So find the external IP of your server that you just deployed and uh, configure it as an A record domain. So again, th this process will depend on the provider you use for your domains, but for the one I use it's in DNS records, you need to create an A record. So let's go to add, I'll create A record and I will want uh, a subdomain. So I want my server to be available at btcpayserver.btcpay.sh, let's say that. Or if you do not want a subdomain, you can leave it blank and then just have it on btcpay.sh. In the IP address field, paste the external IP of the server you just created. Click create. And now we basically pointed our domain to our server. Now we can finally begin with server deployment. We'll be deploying BTC Pay Server in the Docker and I recommend while you follow this tutorial that you always have BTC Pay Server Docker repository opened. We have the installation process covered there and in this tutorial I'll be simply copy pasting the instructions from there to my server. Also, depending on the time where you're watching this, you some things may change so we never know that. So it is very important that you copy information provided in full installation for technical users in our Docker repository. I will put the link to our Docker repository in the description of this video so that you can follow along. So the first thing you want to do is open up your terminal. If you're a Linux or Mac user, you can of course just open your terminal and we need to SSH into our m virtual machine. If you're using Windows, I'll put the link on how you can log in into your server from your Windows. We have to do SSH and now it really depends on your server. Uh, your, either they will give you root access right away or they will give you username and then you need to log in into root. My provider provides root access right away so it will be root at then it is the IP of my server and that's basically it. I will need to confirm this and enter the password. 
Now you will see that I'm logged in into root right away. If you're, for example, logged in as a regular user, as you can see here, you, you need to use sudo su. So make sure that you're into root while doing this procedure. And the first thing we need to do is create a folder for BTC Pay server. So just copy the commands from here, then cd into that folder. And now we need to clone the Docker repository of BTC Pay server into our machine. You'll now see uh, your machine or server may not have get installed and probably this will also happen with my machine. In case you receive this error command get no found, you'll need to do this install in order to install git so if you do not receive this error fine but if you do just install git first and this will take a few moments and once your git is installed you can try with the same command again so now we are cloning the repository once that is done we now want to cd into btc base server we'll do that and now this is the fun part. These are called here environment variables and they can be easily changed, added and so on. Uh, in this video I'll be using the default setup but you'll have a list of all the environment variables here and you can learn which one you need, which one you want to use and so on. Be aware that some environment variables may impact the performance on, of your server including storage and RAM. So. Just make sure if you're using, for example, adding altcoins to your BTC Pay server, you will probably need more storage and better machine. I'll be using the bare bone, the most basic setup, which is described here. So the first thing we, we have here is BTC Pay server host. BTC Pay server host is basically a do domain name that we've put. So export BTC Pay, and in my case, that is BTC Pay dot BTC Pay dot SH. Do not forget that here you need to put your own domain name. Press enter. Now we need to set up the network. Do we want our server to be on the mainnet or maybe testnet? If you want testnet, of course, replace mainnet with testnet. I will be putting it on mainnet. Now we need to add BTC as our coin. I won't be needing a Litecoin here. It is given here for demonstration purposes. Uh, we will need nginx so basically we're just copy pasting commands here and uh, if, if you want to use lightning network you can use this here i'll be using uh, c lightning as described here and we need to do uh, enable ssh here Th that will enable you to easier update your btc pay server from the user interface once you're done with exporting variables they can be either this here default or the ones you prefer you simply need to run this command that will install your BTC Pay server. You'll now see. Press enter and BTC Pay server will begin installing. This process may take a while, so do not worry if it's stuck for a while. It will take around five to 10 minutes for depending on machine performance for this to be finished. So give it some time. Once this process is done, that means that you can visit your BTC Pay server. But I wanted actually to show you one more trick before we do that. As you might remember at the beginning of this video, I told you that uh, my machine will need around 80 gigabytes of storage space. And how do we do that when full Bitcoin node is around 300 or more gigabytes? So we do that with a simple process called pruning. Pruning is enable your node has to download the blockchain data and validate everything and all the blocks and transactions, but it throws away old data and just keeps the one that we need. This saves your disk space from having to hold the entire blockchain basically. Since we have only 80 gigabytes of storage, we need to prune our node. And how do we do that? It's also documented here. Just go to under the hood here and you'll see here. These are the environment variables which we need to use in order to prune our node. If you have a 120 gigabytes or 200 gigabytes, you can prune your node to up to 100 gigabytes. You can prune it up to 50, you can prune it up to 25. My server in particular has 200 gigabytes, but I told you at the beginning that we'll need at least 80, so I will use this environment variable. This is also good practice that will show you how you can easily modify environment variables. Specifically for pruning, we even have it documented here 
in this document so you basically need to export another variable so you see here the environment variable you just go up and uh, you'll see that we need opt uh, save storage s so basically we're not, not right now exporting s you can of course go with access xss depending on what storage you have so once you do that you need to rerun the again the process of setting it up usually you do this up on first setup but i forgot and this is a good practice that will show you how you can easily alter any environment variable here if you want to exclude an environment variable for example you would just need to let's say that we want to exclude this one we just need to paste it empty like this and then it will exclude it but don't do that right now so now we need to rerun this setup so that it includes our prune node so hit enter and the btc paste server will rerun the process again by pruning our node when you're altering the data the process is uh, much faster than it usually is when setting it up for the first time so now you just need to visit your host of BTC Pacer, and that is the domain name that we've set up at our first environment variable. In my case, that is btcpay.btcpay.sh. From here, you just need to register your account and wait for synchronization process to finish, which may take one to three days, depending on your server performance. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you face any troubles during your deployment, make sure to check our documentation. And if you have any questions, our community is ready to help at chat.btcbayserver.org. Thank you very much for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.